Well, it's been a while, Joe Edwards. It's been about a couple of weeks since we did one of these, a pre-match preview, but Wolves are still in action. One of the last clubs in English football to still be playing. And that's what we want. That's what we want. Let, let's, let's get over the down and the dismal and the dreary and the, and the sad situation of, of Chelsea in the FA Cup final. Let's concentrate on the here and now. And that's Wolves are still in Europe. We've got a big game tomorrow night at Molyneux, Olympiacos, second leg, poised evenly from the first one. And look, it's something to get involved in. End of the day, Joe, Wolves are four wins away from Champions League football. Yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, that Chelsea game, I think there's, you know, put let's put that to, put that in the rear view. Forget about it, um, forget about it. Yeah, that's gone. And, um, you know, as you say, four games. Um, to, to potentially seal a Champions League place. Uh, these, a win here would, of course, get you into Germany for that mini-tournament and then it's anybody's game. But sure. um, Olympiakos will be tough. Um, you know, We'll get on to it shortly, but they're, they're a decent side. Plenty of European pedigree. This is going to be their 300th European match, which, mm. is, which is quite the feat. But um, Wolves, after that disappointment against Chelsea, uh, a couple of days off they've been able to work in here and there as well. So... Uh, they're ready to go. Everybody's fit and firing. Yeah, and look, Olympiacos, uh, no pushovers whatsoever. We've spoken to to quite a few experts, and uh, look, they've been on a fantastic run since uh, since the restart. It's going to be a difficult evening. They're going to have to play a damn sight better than they have done to finish the season, aren't they? I know it's tiredness. I know it's difficult. I know they've got a small squad. But they've got to they've got to switch off that now. They need to recharge. They've had a few days off, and uh, it's important to hit that ground running, isn't it? Tomorrow night. It is, it is, and you know, I know Wolves do have a, a little advantage going into this game. Of course, they have the away goal, so if it was to end goalless, then then of course they'd be through. But you can't really play uh, that way. I know, I know, Nuno side do base themselves off clean sheets, but um, this Olympiacos side has got goals in them, and they're used to winning games of football. Only one loss all season uh, in the league, and that was after they had the, the league won. Um, they're in a winning groove. They know how to win games of football. They knocked Arsenal out of out the competition in the last 32. So I think that tells you pretty much all you need to know. Uh, they've got some good players. Um, Wolves, if they're at their best, mm-hmm. should win. But, you know, I stress that. Wolves are going to have to be at their best. Um, you know, Olympiacos now push you over at all. Uh, and Wolves will know the players inside out because it's, it is, of course, the, the Daniel Pudence derby. Uh, and I'm yeah. sure he's had him into, in, into his office, Nuno, and uh, sat him down and probably given him two or three or four hour... Uh, presentation on every single player because he's meticulous in his planning Nuno and uh, he'll be asking Mr Pudence everything he, that he knows about, about the squad that, that he uh, he's obviously played with and knows very well himself Well Daniel Pudence has done a, a 50 slide PowerPoint <laughs> on, um, on, all, on every single one of their players their strengths and weaknesses now not quite that I'm sure but you know sharing his insight from 18 months at Olympiacos um, you know was was with this squad for the first half of this season, um, played in the Champions League with uh, Olympiacos in the first half of this season as well. So, and that side, you know, I think there was a couple of comings and goings in January. Of course, Powden's being one of them, but that, that Olympiacos side is is pretty much the same. It's the same manager, uh, the mm-hmm. manager as well, Pedro Martins, very uh, good friend of Nuno's. Actually, they uh, both played together uh, in the nineties at uh, Vitoria Guimarães in uh, in Portugal. So. You know, I'm sure you know they'll be wishing each other well. But once, once you, you know, once that whistle blows, they go from friends to you know to enemies for for 90 minutes at least. And uh, a, a win would be would be massive for Wolves. So you know that that, that cannot be understated. You know, you want to get to Germany and uh, you know end this journey uh, in the way that it deserves. Yeah, injuries, no injuries. So so a fully fit squad for for Nuno to choose from. I guess the main talking points, the kind of back. I guess the back. Eight pick for themselves. It's kind of up front it where we where we think he's yeah. gonna play two up front, he's gonna play three up front. We've seen Neto, we've seen Pedence, we see we've seen Jota, you know uh Raul's obviously the one who's who's definitely gonna start. I think can, it's pretty safe to say that. But where do you think he'll go? Um, would you start Pedence? Would you say because he knows the players, or do you think that maybe it might be one for him to, to come off the bench? It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because obviously it'd be difficult for him playing against a side that he knows so well, but maybe that could be an advantage for Wolves. I personally go with Powdance, um, you know, not just based on the fact that he knows Olympiacos, but because of what we've seen of him, you know, in the final few weeks of the season, I think he does bring something different to the table. He's got that vision. Um, he'll he'll always look for the ball. I mean, this is a big game where you need players to kind of take responsibility and and be bold and be brave. And I, and Powdance strikes me as one of those players that he's happy to do that. Of course, 
Diogo Jota, his, his, his record in Europe is, is fantastic. Um, you know, six goals from ten shots mm-hmm. um, from the group stage onwards. But he's not been in the best form as of late. Pedro Neto didn't really do much for his cause at, at Chelsea last time out either. So, it, personally, I, I'd, I'd like to see uh, Traore and Pauden side by side of Jimenez. But equally, at the same time, I wouldn't be all too surprised to see Jota in there purely because you know he loves this competition. So you've gone for what's your front three? Powdens, Traore, Jimenez. So that means it'll be it'll be <laughs> Neto, Ca- Campania. Campana. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, no, and Benny Ashley C. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So but look, it's it's. Uh, I think you're right. I think I think end of the day, if Wolves play to the, to, to what they can do, then then they should win this game, and it, it's all going to be on them. Uh, we spoke to Dimi Samalis in the podcast uh, earlier on last week, and he said that that they will soak up pressure on Olympiacos and like to hit on the counter. Wolves, of course, like to do that themselves. So don't be surprised if we see another cagey opening, forty five minutes. But like you say, just in case Wolves have got that nil nil to um, as, as a little bit of a bonus if they want to sit on that um, if it's coming down to the last 20 minutes or half an hour but it's going to be a one-off tie and um, I think it's going to be good it's going to be an entertaining game and I think fireworks could happen in the second half what do you uh, what do you see the score as Joe? Um, I think Wolves will get through it uh, and I think it's going to be tight I think one goal uh, uh, you know is probably good, perhaps going to do it um, just get that goal try and get it early if you can really and then you know get the early the onus on Olympiacos to push forward and stretch themselves and then hopefully pick off some gaps that way. I, mean, I, know, I know Wolves do tend to turn it on more in the second half, but it'd be so good to see just an early start, give yourself a cushion um, to, to, to kind of build on. And, um, you know, Olympiacos, they're, they're set to be without their first-choice goalkeeper as well. I mean, he, he could make a, a miraculous recovery, but all the all the musings are that Jose Saru, who's kept 29 clean sheets mm. this season, he's going to miss out through injury. So Bobby Elan, who is relatively untested, only made a handful of appearances for them, he's going to be in goal. So test him. I mean, he sounds simple, um, but get shots off, the likes of Neves. Uh, we'd like to see him a lot higher up the pitch than he was at Chelsea. So get those shots off in, in and around 20 yards, something like that. Just see what he's all about and uh, hopefully, yeah, get an early goal. I'll say I'll say 2-0 Wolves. 2-0 Wolves, okay. I'm going to say 1-0. Yeah. I'm going to say 1-0. Uh, second half, pedent strike. Runs across to the away the away bench and gives it that. Come on then, come on then. It'll be great. <laughs> right, think, look, look, look let's, let's hope they get through. We need, a, we need a bit of a success, a little bit of happiness for the end of the season. So myself and Joe will be at Molyneux tomorrow night. For all the build-up on this one, make sure you log on to expressthestar.com. <laughs>